someone leaves this conference and says, I'm going to eat a whole food plant-based <coughs> diet, um, do they have to worry about deficiencies such as protein, iron, iodine, B12, DHA, vitamin D, DHA, I, um, taurine, vanadium, chromium, or anything else that meat eaters don't have? And how do you solve for all of these? Can I start? <laughs> because uh, uh, the protein issue is something that uh, very sensitive uh, just because uh, I have a family member, my mom will kill me if I use her name, oh, I just did, sorry, <laughs> okay. um, who actually is a raw vegan, but raw vegan, nothing wrong with being raw, nothing wrong with being vegan, of course, but if you are very restricted in what you're eating, and you're eating just a handful of things, you better check the amino acid content of what you're eating. Uh, and so she ended up deficient uh, in lysine, cysteine, and methionine, uh, and that made her protein deficient. Uh, that, if, if you don't, if you're generally protein deficient, you can get into some major trouble. So she ended up with uh, five loaves of pulmonary embolism because she had deep vein thrombosis. Why? Because one of the proteins, or two of the proteins that you make, are natural anticoagulants, uh, protein C and protein S. Without them, you will clot. Uh, it was hard to explain to this very intelligent, educated woman what was going on because there's another protein, RBAP48, that if you don't make it you can, uh, and you don't have it in your hippocampus, you can't encode new memories. So every 15 minutes she would ask me why she's in the hospital. Uh, say nothing about the albumin and the prealbumin, so her legs are swollen, etc. Um, so everyone says that on a vegan diet you can't get protein deficient. If you do it really, really wrong, you actually can. Now the reason to talk about that is because it's so unique. No, no one should be doing that. Everyone should be eating a variety of uh, grains, a, a variety of nuts. And she still is a raw vegan. And all I did was increase from almonds to almonds, cashews, walnuts, uh, pecans. Uh, and all of a sudden, her protein's perfectly normal. So I, there is a little bit of a warning there. Uh, and I'd love to hear what the rest of the panel has to say. But I just want to point out one other thing. The thing that does get the, it can get deficient if you don't eat dirt is B12. Um, and most people know that, they've heard it before, they're taking B12 supplements, and I just want to make sure that everybody saw the publication that said that if you are a male ex-smoker, you can actually increase your lung cancer rate, similar to the vitamin A studies years ago, if you're eating too much B12, and how much B12 uh, supplementation, sorry, not eating, but the, how much B12 does it take? They said about 55 micrograms. Most of our pills are like 1,000, so uh, it's stored well enough, if you're gonna take 1,000, chop it into pieces or something like that, and take a little bit every now and then, and that, that should do it. Uh, other than that, you know, I don't have a lot of uh, advice that we have to give people, except that uh, business that I always say about rearranging your, um, uh, your retirement funds because you're gonna live longer. <laughs> uh, I, go ahead, Bridget. you haven't talked um, Well, I, I would say definitely there are some things you need to be conscious of. And, and I couldn't agree more about the protein. There's a real myth that we don't ever have to worry about protein. If you eat enough calories, it's, it's just not an issue. But if you eat, uh, um, you know, you're eating more, more oil, more sugar, uh, you may not get enough protein. If you're eating uh, uh, mainly fruit, you may not get enough protein. Uh, and, and I think the other thing is, if you're a senior, your ability to um, assimilate, to d you need a certain amount of, of, um, of acid in your stomach to be able to, to break down proteins. Your dig the digestibility is reduced as you get older. And so some countries actually have separate recommendations for people 70 plus for protein, and it's about 25% higher than for younger people. And the issue here is very simple. As you get older, you need fewer calories, right? And so you need more nutrients because you're not absorbing as well, and yet you need fewer calories, which means the, the whole point of nutritional excellence is, is magnified. You can't afford to be eating a lot of foods that don't provide nutritional value. So I think that's something to consider. And then the other things, um, B12 was mentioned, we absolutely have to have B12. Vitamin D, if you're living in an area where you don't have adequate exposure to warm sunshine, uh, you would need some vitamin D, especially during those months. 
Uh, and then for some people, iodine, and especially in the countries where the soil iodine is low and you're not using, you know, um, foods that maybe the processed foods tend to have more. So because they're using iodized salt sometimes, or if you're not using iodized salt, not eating seaweed and living in a, an area with low iodine, iodine could be an issue. Uh, so, and then of course, uh, iron and zinc, if you're not eating a lot, of, uh, you know, you're not eating legumes and you're not eating nuts and seeds. So there are a number of issues. So the, the bottom line really is you want to have variety and you want to be including a wide range of within sort of each food group so that you meet your nutritional requirements. And then of course, EPA and DHA, well, essential fatty acids are, can be an issue as well. That was great. And taking it a little further, that, that the idea that we're, you know, when a person gets over the age of 75, their protein ability to digest and make protein bioavailable goes down. But keep in mind that when on a healthy diet of nutritional excellence that's slowing aging, like a nutritarian diet, that you're not going to develop that protein lower absorption at the age of 75. That may happen until you be 85. Or, so you're, you're aging slower and your di digestive capacity stays good as you age compared to an average American who's aging 10 or 20 years earlier than we're aging. You know? So furthermore, it is an issue though because IGF-1 is an issue where it gets too high can promote disease, but it also, with lower protein bioavailability with aging, can get too low and accelerate disease. So there's no one size fits all and some of these low fat, macrobiotic type, you know, potato based vegan diets are not good for toddlers and young children because they're low in protein and fat and they're not good for the elderly because they're too low in protein and fat. They're, they might be okay for middle aged. But they're really, but by using hemp seeds and beans and Mediterranean pine nuts and more green vegetables and broccoli and things like that, and we, our diet, we're designing the diet to be more protein adequate as you get older and making sure that we're maintaining people with enough IGF-1 so it doesn't drop too low. So we're, the diet is more carefully designed than, and as a vegan, we want to make sure that we're not just assuming any vegan diet is okay for everybody and we're making sure it's okay for people. The other issue is that that we didn't, the only thing we didn't mention, I think, was zinc that is absorbed about 20% over plant foods compared to 80% from animal products. And the, the ability to absorb zinc goes down with aging. And if you're not gonna die of a heart attack or a stroke or cancer, a leading cause of death 200 years ago might be pneumonia or infection. And that, so it may be true, it's hard to have enough data, but it may be true that lower bioavailability of zinc on a vegan diet with aging could have a permitted an infection that, that occurred that didn't have to occur if the person had optimal levels of zinc. So we might be prolonging lifespan in vegans by giving them some zinc as they age to ensure zinc adequacy without the consumption of animal products. Nice. Um, I'd like to add a few things to that. The first assumption is a meat eater is getting more nutrition than a vegan. I don't think that's true at all, okay? Both meat eaters, in, in the studies, maybe 40% of meat eaters are B12 deficient, maybe 80% of vegans. You're both B12 deficient, and that's only at 200 nanograms. At 450 nanograms, which is optimal B12, you're looking at a much higher percentage of meat eaters and vegans. So I strongly recommend people take a human active B12, not a synthetic B12, because it's a different frequency. So everybody needs that. Uh, some research has shown that up to 96% of the US population, 70% maybe the world population, is deficient in iodine. That's a huge one. Iodine is, the highest concentration of iodine isn't in the thyroid, it's in the skin. But you need iodine in the thyroid, you need iodine for brain. People who are low in iodine have lower IQs. Mothers who have adequate iodine, their children are born with 13 point higher IQ. They did a study in Indonesia where they gave uh, grammar school kids iodine. In, in three months, their IQs jumped eight points and they were doing better academics. So everyone, most everyone is low in iodine, okay? In, particularly in this country, particularly also since they stopped making iodized salt for whatever reason. I don't know what they were thinking. So 
Iodine is another division. 85% of the population, as far as I can tell, in the U.S. is vitamin D deficient. The minimum is 30, but I like to see people around 80, but the percentages are 85% uh, being lower than 30, and I see a lot of people come in with that. Again, vegan, meat eater, I don't think there's a big difference here in, in terms of what I see. So most everyone needs it. What you do need is a vitamin D blood test, though, you, you know, to monitor how you're doing, because you, you do not want to go above 100. I'm kind of interested in, I think, what you said about vitamin D a little bit earlier, that an excess could be a problem. Yes. And it's... B12. Oh, it was B12, I'm sorry. Vitamin D in excess is a problem, too. Yeah, I know, I got that. Yeah. Uh, but I thought uh, there was something else. But yeah, you have to keep your vitamin D, you want it not above 100, okay, period. And if you're going to do vitamin D, which you should, most people, you need to take vitamin MK7, which works with it so that the calcium from the stimulated calcitonin, it, it goes into the bones and not into your tissues. Okay, now meat eaters, the meat has less B3 and B6, uh, so they're more likely to have those levels of deficiency. So um, meat eaters are gonna have more deficiency in some area, but the point I'm making is they're not so different than vegans. We tend to think, oh, we're vegans, we're gonna be deficient, that just isn't the case. I pretty much will say most vegans I see are deficient in some of these things. So that's why I say B12 and, you know, is, is, is one. Vitamin D is another that we just need to give attention to. I also agree with Joe about zinc. I've been noticing that also with people a little bit older, that there is a zinc deficiency pretty consistently. Not a good thing because of your immune system and so forth. So those are just some kind of overview type things. Now, the issue of protein is interesting. The, the, a study, and not that one study is the answer, but uh, for people in the middle age, men, and they, if they were out of that mTOR pathway, excess protein, they doubled the rate of mortality and quadrupled the rate of cancer. Now, they didn't say what that level was, but excess protein is really what we're talking about. Now, when people hit 60, 65, then that changes and people need more protein. It wasn't 65. What? It was, that was not true. The, the first group was between the age of 50 and, eight and 65 when they started the study. They followed them for 18 years. Yes. So the average, so the person, there was the second group was 65 to 85 and they followed them for 18 years. So they, they, start, so they averaged around 77 compared to an average around 62. So I'm saying that you're, it was a little older age than in that study you referred to. Okay, maybe if that we're talking about the same study, because it was a little vaguer than that. It didn't have those statistics. But I'm not going to disagree. I think okay. the problem is the trend is what the trend is. And I found out for myself, at the age around 70, and I was doing uh, pull-ups, and, and I wasn't going beyond 25 uh, twice a day when I was doing it. Um, and I added one tablespoon, one tablespoon of blue-green algae, uh, and I went up. That was all the protein I needed, and I went up to, in a few weeks, up to 50 and making it up to 100. But the, the point I'm making is one little bit made a huge difference in my protein balance. Okay, so at 75, 76, where I am now, in, we, can, we can get really good health, you know, up, now I know not that many people do a lot of pull-ups. You, okay. pull, you can do 15 pull-ups? I didn't say 15, I said, oh. I said 50. You can do 50, 50 pull-ups? 50, well actually, how about 80? <laughs> From a hang pull-ups? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, that's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. That's but, incredible. But, but, that's 600 push-ups. 600 push-ups, right. Okay, wow. but the point is, the point is, that little bit of protein pushed me from 25 all the way up to really, I hit 100 at one point. So 
it, it does make a difference. These, these little shifts make a real difference. So we do need to pay attention to those shifts with age. And so we have to look at nutrition, as you were hinting, in a life cycle kind of way. So, you know, kids before puberty, they need a certain nutrition. And then, you know, puberty to middle age, they need a certain nutrition. And then above maybe 60, we go over that. I don't know what study you're referring to, but I need to find it. I'll show it to you. Yeah. Because um, I had a, a kind of less detailed study. It's 50 to, it's 50 to 65 year olds, followed for 18 years, yeah. in the highest ter tertiary of protein consumption, had four times the risk of cancer, 75% increase over more mortality. Right. In the group that was older than that, that's 50 to 65, we're talking about now 65 to 80, yeah. followed for 18 years, those groups in the higher range, in the lower range of protein had increased mortality. Lower range of protein. Increased mortality. That's right. In a higher range. You've got to go to more protein. But it followed for 18 age. years. Except for diabetes, they had 10 times more. And they had more risk of diabetes. That was the Levine uh, study from yes. 2014. Yes, that was the study in 2014. That's correct. Correct. I mean, good. But, but also have that women have, and also that the iron issue is that women absorb iron at very different rates from one woman to another. So there's no cookbook approach. Because like in the medical profession, we give the iron in a prenatal vitamin to all women. But if you look at the studies in more detail, you find that some women do better with iron and some women do better without iron because their ferritins are adequate, their iron level stores are good, and they should have been better not taking extra iron. So we're talking about individual, not cookbook medicine, but individualizing it to people's individual differences is what we do as nutritional specialists a little bit more. With totally. A little bit, a little bit better than most doctors would do. Totally.